What do you think first when you hear a word laser? Many of you guys seen laser technology in science fiction movies like Star Wars and it's no doubt thanks to these sorts of stories we now associate lasers with futuristic warfare and sleek spaceships. But lasers play a pivotal role in our everyday lives too. The fact is they show up in an amazing range of products and technologies. You'll find them in everything from CD players, tattoo removal, hair replacement, eye surgery, they all use lasers. But what is laser? In this video, you will learn the major quantum mechanical concept behind the laser. But first, let's start with the fundamentals of laser technology. The matter consists of atoms. This simple atom consists of a nucleus containing the protons and neutrons and an electron cloud. It is helpful to think of the electrons in this cloud circling the nucleus in many different orbits. Atoms can be in different states of excitation. In other words, they can have different energies. If we apply a lot of energy to an atom, the electron can leave what is called the ground state energy level and go to an excited level. The level of excitation depends on the amount of energy that is applied to the atom via heat, light or electricity. Once an electron moves to a higher energy orbit, it eventually wants to return to the ground state. When it does, it releases its energy as a photon, a particle of light. This process is called relaxation. You see atoms releasing energy as photons all the time. For example, when the hot iron bright red, the red color is caused by atoms excited by heat releasing red photons. So what is a laser? A laser is a device that controls the way that energized atoms release photons. Laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, which basically describes how a laser works. So let's take a closer look on the principle behind the laser. In quantum mechanics, the energy of an atom is quantized, which means it represented as discontinuous levels. Once the atom is excited, its energy rises to the next level. If a photon with the proper energy is sent to an excited atom, the atom will fall into the lower energy and it will emit a second photon perfectly identical to the first one. In a laser, excited atoms are put between two mirrors. A first photon stimulates an atom which emits a second photon and so on thanks to these mirrors. This process is called stimulated emission. The resulting photons are all identical. They have the same energy which gives them the same color and a unique direction. This is how a laser works. So now, let's take a look on the laser device and how it works. The laser device is made up of a gain medium confined between two mirrors. One mirror is completely reflective and the reflectivity of another is less than 100% so that the laser beam can go out. Another part that we need is an energy source in order to excite electrons from ground level to a higher one, a process called optical pumping. Now let's have a look inside of the gain medium. The electrons of the atoms are on the ground state. Now the optical pumping, which is emitted energy in the form of photons, is used to raise the electron into a higher energy level. In this case, we consider three-level laser, where excited electron jumps two levels above the ground state. 
After a short period of time, the electron jumps into first excited state, above ground state, without emission of the photon. The electron will maintain its energy level for some time. In this energy level, the electron will not interact with the photons coming from outside. And then, it will spontaneously emit a photon in a random direction as it relaxes back to ground state. This photon may interact with an atom that haven't emitted a photon yet. So the photon hits the excited atom and causes a stimulated emission of an absolutely identical photon. Only the photons emitted in the direction perpendicularly to mirror will be reflected. The reflected photons initiated the chain reaction to produce more and more photons of the same kind. Furthermore, only photons with the same amount of energy and momentum will be part of the chain reaction. That's the reason why laser beams so strongly coherent and monochromatic. A very important fact is that many atoms must be in an excited state. For laser to work, more atoms must be in excited state than in lower energy state, and that is called population inversion. The semi-transparent mirror allows some of the laser energy to be emitted while bouncing most of it back to the laser. And that's what's creating the laser beam. Guys, we're coming to the secret room. Be careful, because laser is on. and we are here now in the physics department and filming the actual laser which in our university just and here is our expert hello yeah hi my name is Yin Yang Nam so I belong to laser plasma isolation lab so okay uh, I will explain about our, our high power laser system so our laser system energy is uh, uh, intensity is 20 terawatt and the first rate is 45 seconds so intensity is quite high so our laser system consists of three parts, three kinds of laser actually. So this laser, this laser is called oscillator. It can produce very short pulse, 20 femtoseconds. Femtosecond is a ten to the minus 15, so it's really short. So we use that oscillator as a seed beam, and this one is a degenerative amplifier, second amplification. The third one is the one space amplifier. The third one is the one space amplifiers. Here. So we amplitude the first is three times. Here is the first stage and this is the second stage. This is the third stage. So here no. uh, here is the energy just started from just a few nanojoule, but here 100 joule. Ah, one joule. One joule. So Catch the almost the nine orders can amplitude. So we uh, did experiment uh, here over there. So we used that kind of high power laser system to uh, for our laser plasma interaction because uh, if you just uh, uh, shut the laser, then everything just become plasma is ionized. So we are studying about the interaction between the laser and the plasma. So here is our experimental chamber. So, so we just use the gas. We just push the gas into the some hole, some capillary, capillary hole. Then the, we shut the laser. Then this gas immediately become plasma, become plasma. Then the laser interact with the plasma, then some electron, some electron accelerate quite high energy. It becomes the relativistic. So relativistic electron uh, oscillate a little bit and uh, radiate uh, X-ray light. So 
we will use that kind of X-ray light for some uh, biochemistry and then, then physics and so we will use that kind of very uh, special X-ray from the plasma and the laser interaction. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, we've just been through the invisible laser, which shoots in the IR range. But now we're going to see the real spectacular show. And here's my friend Vanessa. Which department are you from? And which lab? Uh, I'm from Laser Plus Maceration Lab. So this is the AER laser. OK. The wavelength is in the green zone. What is this sound right now? Okay. So this is the actual laser. This is the actual laser. Uh, yeah. The laser is green. It will give the green light. How long is it going to take? Yeah, I did. I just pressed the single shot button. Is it possible? Again? Is it possible to make like a beam? So we, which wavelength is that? 532. Yeah. Okay, the fundamental wavelength is 1064 1, nanometer. Okay. And then it is frequency double to 532. 